So it's all come down to this. This is part three of the frequency masking series of videos that I'm doing on my YouTube channel. And you might be wondering to yourself, if you haven't seen this before, what is frequency masking? Well, frequency masking is exactly what you see right here. I'm wearing a mask on my face. And you might notice when you go to different places and you're trying to talk to people and everybody's wearing a mask, sometimes it's difficult to hear what everyone is saying. And you have to go, huh, what, what are you saying? and they have to repeat themselves. And it's because of this mask, this barrier in front of our mouth, that's making it more difficult to hear and understand what other people are saying. It's masking our words and making it difficult to comprehend. Well, frequency masking, when you get rid of it, whew, that feels nice to breathe, I love that. When you get rid of frequency masking in your mix, you're gonna allow your elements to ultimately come out clear. They're not gonna compete with each other. It's gonna be much easier to hear them coherently, of course, and just create more separation and detail in the mix because these sounds are ultimately muddled on top of one another and blocking each other from fully being heard, just like this face mask that I was just wearing a moment ago. So in today's video, we're doing part three of this series once again, and we're talking about how to deal with frequency masking when it comes to a two-track beat and a vocal acapella. Are you ready? Let's go. So hopefully by now you've seen my other frequency masking videos. The first one was all about the kick and the bass. The second was about clashing instrument sounds, melodies, chords, things of that nature. If you haven't, don't worry, I'll leave a link above or below for you to check out so you can watch them. And I definitely recommend you do because they're gonna definitely explain certain things that I'm talking about in this video, perhaps a little bit more in depth than I'm about to here. This is the third part of a video I shot all in one sitting. So please keep that in mind when you watch I'm definitely not gonna go super in depth on everything. I might actually breeze through some things, but again, if you go back and watch these first two, you'll probably have a much better idea of what's happening. But most importantly, just consider what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, and ultimately how to implement it into your own session, regardless of what DAW you are using. Before we get into that, I wanted to ask if you could please like and subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification. I drop something new every single week, always focused on helping you sound better and helping you make more money with your music. If you want help with these areas, definitely stay tuned so I can help you in these areas. But with that in mind, let's rewind to the previous week and show you how to fix frequency masking when it comes to a two track beat and an acapella. Here we go. So I've got the vocals and the instrumental here and the same logic is gonna apply. We're ultimately gonna just create a pro cue on each of these. And then on each one, we're gonna make sure that it recognizes the opposing sound. And don't mind that I'm using two stems for this. I've just committed this to audio for the sake of the lesson. You can absolutely do this on an aux or a bus or a group. Same logic applies. I'm just applying this on an audio track, but there's no you know particular reason why you should do that. All right. So each of them now is recognizing one another, but we have to be mindful that anything we do here is going to be very, very extreme. So we're going to want to make subtle moves because whatever I do is going to affect the entire group of sounds, right? So if I do something to the instrumental, I'm not just affecting one single sound like the bass or whatever, which may be a little bit more transparent. I might be affecting, you know, the bass and the kick simultaneously, as well as some of the low frequencies on a pad or something, or maybe if it's higher up, I might be affecting the, the claps, the snares, the hi-hats, all kinds of stuff. So here we're going to want to be a lot more calculated and delicate, but at the same time, we're going to do this to create a little bit more space between each. And usually what I find I'm doing is I'm creating more space for the vocal or I'm creating more space um, for the beat, the low end of the beat, the bass, the kick on the vocal, right? So on the instrumental side, I'm making space for the vocal to cut more on the Opposite end, I'm making sure that the bass and the kick are gonna cut more if it feels like it's getting in the way or getting lost in some sort of fashion. So we got this set up. Let's look here at this instrumental first and just take a listen and see if we can identify some spots where there's some overlap. I'm different, I'm built for this heart from hearing BS. Not hearing it, but I am the one, the sun who just begun. I fought, I won, I hit, home run, subdue my mood. I pay my dues, my God, my crew, open doors, let me through. I'm different, I'm built for this heart. So as you can see, I've sort of identified a few spots, right? Like here, we got 152 on the instrumental once again. So there's a little bit of overlap between the vocal and instrumental here. 387, 652, 
and 55-51. So ultimately, we're going to want to now decide the priority for these, okay? Now here, I think it's more important to prioritize the beat, but then with these ones, I think it might be a little bit more important to prioritize the vocals, at least here. Maybe here as well depends, because this is also the hi-hat, right? If I were to play this one more time. So primarily hi-hat there. What about here? Another kind of droney frequency. A little bit of low end, but this also is generally muddy for a beat. You know, 300-ish is always roughly the muddy kind of area. And let's hear this lower frequency now. Imagine this is going to be more kick, maybe a little bit of bass. Right? So now that we've kind of done that, what I'm going to do is, this one obviously I want to accentuate on the opposite, so I'm just going to bypass. But then these two, I want to make room for the vocal. So the next thing I want to do is I want to just create the send on each channel. Once again, same sort of process. So this is the vocal. I'll use my main Vox sidechain bus that I've had created from previously. And then the instrumental one, I'll just create a new one. Let's just say 7172, pre-fader, and I'll call it beat sidechain. All right. So right now I'm looking at the instrumental pro cue. So I'm gonna make this receive the trigger from the main Vox sidechain. And like before, I'm going to make each of these bands dynamic. I'm not going to touch this one, I don't think. Just these two, I think, makes the most sense. And I want to do this very subtly, so I'll probably only have this reduced by about a dB. All right. Let me set this up so it recognizes the side chain. Now I'm just going to dial the threshold in. And again, these are flat. I'm not taking away or adding. I'm just leaving them flat. And then whenever the vocal is happening, it's going to remove or reduce these frequencies a little bit. Down in my life is coming up. So I'm going to just bypass this and we'll play the first little bit and I'll put it in. Let's just hear and listen if the vocal comes out a little bit more on top clearly. Okay. Over the beat, of course. So let's check this out without it and I'll put it in. I'm different. I'm built for this heart from hearing BS. Not hearing it, but I am the one, the sun who just begun. I fought, I won, I hit, home run, subdue my mood. I paid my dues, my God, my crew open doors. Let me through. Yeah. I'm different. I'm built for this heart from hearing BS. Not hearing it, but I am the one, the sun who just begun. I fought, I won, I hit, home run, subdue my mood. I paid my dues, my God. So I would say so. I would say it's coming a little bit you know, more clearly on top of the beat, you know, less congestion. So with this in mind, looking at about 154 is the spot where we want to reduce for the bass. And as you can tell, I did this a little bit differently. I didn't actually use the analyzer here, but I could tell that this is obviously a point where there's some friction between the two. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be the same on this end. So I'm going to just dial this in like a scientist. And again, I'm going to make this a very subtle move. Let's say 1 dB with a narrow cue. I'm gonna make sure that my input for the key is set up so it recognizes the beat, beat side chain. And here we go, I'm just gonna dial the threshold in and let's see if we can make that uh, bass not clash as much with the vocal. So in this case, the bass and kick should come out a little bit more after this move, here we go. My crew open doors, let me through yeah. Bent toes down, eyes open, never shut Bring a peace to my mind, cause my scars say enough Stay to myself, and I trust in my gut That every down in my life is coming up I'm different, I'm built for this Hard from hearing BS Not hearing it, but I am the one The sun who just begun I fought, I won, I hit, home run Subdue my mood, I paid my dues My God, my crew open doors, let me through yeah. I'm there and now that I've heard that, actually, I want to actually just try going back to the beat and making this hi-hat a little bit more out of the way. Maybe I won't make it a full dB. I'll make it like a half dB. But I'm going to recognize the side chain. I'm different. I'm built for this. Hard from hearing BS. Not hearing it, but I am the one. The sun who just begun. I fought. I won. I hit. Home run. Subdue my mood. I paid. Oh, yeah. That makes a huge difference. At least for me, it does. I find like that hi-hat was just kind of getting in the way a little bit. You know what I mean? Of his voice. And it was competing for attention. But now that I did this, it sounds a lot better. You know? Hopefully, this is all making sense. But ultimately, I'm doing the same thing as the previous steps. Just going back and forth between each one. 
and determining where there's some masking taking place and then using a dynamic EQ built into the Pro-Q to ultimately get each sound out of each other's way and so that it just blends a little bit better. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you got value out of this video as always. If you can, please like, subscribe, and share. You sharing this with somebody, you putting other people onto it helps me reach more people and helps this channel grow. And as a result, it's gonna allow me to focus more time and more energy into delivering this content to you 100% for free. I just ask that you pay the small fee, which is leave a like, leave a subscribe, and definitely leave a comment if you like what you saw. I'm looking forward to helping you guys again in the very near future, and I'll catch y'all later. I'll take care now. Peace. Five.